There's been unfolding drama here behind the scenes bum, bum, bum. <laughs> at his radio. So Jake, our video producer, you've had something. Yes. An, an issue in the apartment. Mm-hmm. You know, your first big boy apartment, right? Yeah. Had a little issue that you brought up a couple weeks ago. There was something stanky in there. Yes, there was. So for like maybe like a week, there's been this awful smell that's been coming from our kitchen. And we're like, okay, is it the fridge? Is it the stove? Is it the microwave? All that stuff. And it hasn't been... Like any of that stuff, apparently. Um, so First, for like, you thought it was your roommate. <laughs> yes, I thought it was my roommate. No offense. No, no offense to my roommate whatsoever. No. But I was like, okay, I walked into the apartment and I and I just smelled stank. And I was like, okay, either he used the restroom before I came in there. Yeah. I don't know. So I just kind of like, I just kind of like let it slide. I was like, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna embarrass him. Sure. But then day three comes and the smell is still there, and oh. I'm like. Bro, what did you, like, did right. you eat something or like, what's up with this? We need to get you to the so, hospital. All right. And so then, okay, next day goes away. That next day it comes back and it's even stronger. And at this point, I'm just like, I don't know what this rank smell could be. Didn't so, you call the apartment people? Like, yes. I called the, it? I called the maintenance yeah. dude. I did. I called the maintenance dude and it's not like it helped because he came over. He couldn't even figure it out. Right. So we're over here like buying incense. We're buying like, <laughs> like wall, like plugins. We're buying everything. And it's like, it just keeps. The breeze is not exactly helping. That's a like, good place for a stick up. Right. Like it's ridiculous. And so we call this past week. So like this week we called the maintenance guy again. And again, he has no idea. We're even like, did you smell like the corner of the fridge? Like what, yeah. what's, what's going on here? So this man is sniffing everything he's, in your he's like, I'm gonna. Ha-, he says to me, he's like, I'm going to have to call my boss because I have no idea what's going on here. And I'm like, great. Well, that's like three of a kind right here because yeah. all of us don't know what's going on. And then, and then you go to change something yes. out. Yes. Okay. My roommate opens a cabinet above the fridge and he, he steps away from the kitchen. He's like, bro, I think I know what the smell is. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you found it. What is it? He goes, I think it's the trash bags. And I'm like, you think it's the trash bags? They're in a box. So I go look, and there's a bag beside the box of trash bags that looks oddly familiar. And I was wondering where it was when I bought it. And I guess here it was because, ladies and gentlemen, it was a bag of grilled chicken. <laughs> That one of us got confused, and we were going to put it in the freezer, but we ended up putting it in the cabinet above the refrigerator. And I can see, because both you and your roommate are super tall. To me, you're yeah. like, what, 6'3", 6'4"-ish. Right, 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 right. And so you're just like probably having a conversation. Did you see the latest Marvel movie? And bloom, and then there it goes in a cabinet. I'm assuming so, because I guess it took us two weeks to figure that out. Um, And the worst part about it, we threw it away. Horrific smell. So we, like, exercised the whole house. It was so nasty. <laughs> And so we were like, the next day we were like, we can still smell this awful smell. And so um, we were like airing the cabinets out and there's just nothing in there. And so I step on a stool and I look and there is like a liquid in the bottom of the Chicken juice. Cabinet. Yeah, well, of course. Because like yeah. apparently it had leaked. For and two weeks? For, for two bit. weeks. And so I'm over there like cleaning it out. And so we yeah. have other boxes of stuff like aluminum yeah. foil, Ziploc bags, all that stuff. And um, there was this residue and it would stick. And so we had to tear it off. <gasps> and there's residue. And if you're watching right now, you can uh, see the picture right now. Uh, but if you're not, you can go it's to hisvideo.com and yeah. like video replay, shameless plug. But yes, all that to say, that grilled chicken was rank and we all are. You have it out. Yes, now, we're relieved. Right. So you're not the only one, Jake. This has happened. Yes. Investigation into a smell, into a something. You can call or text 800-447-7234. It says right Rob here. and Liz. His morning crew. Oh, my goodness. So, Jake, our video producer, um, has been smelling the smell two, three weeks, something like that. Like, I can't figure it out what is going on. Ended up being a bag of grilled chicken that he and his roommate had put in a cabinet above the refrigerator, above the freezer, Mm -hmm. instead of actually in the freezer. And it was there the whole time. So, had to bring in maintenance people, whatever. Okay, so April. April texted and said... Uh, my son got a job at a pizza place, and a month into the job, we were smelling just something terrible. They got on their hands and knees, smelling the whole house, ended up being his shoes. Ooh. Because at the pizza place, he had stepped all over the cheese, and the cheese was <laughs> stuck on the bottom. 
That's disgusting. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Megan, when she was little, she also texted. She said, uh, we did an Easter egg hunt, and apparently Megan wanted to keep them forever, as kids do, right? <sighs> and so they realized, because it started, you know the smell. Her mom came oh, in, egg smell. vacuumed up the mess, and then threw out a brand new vacuum cleaner because the the vacuum now smelled like <laughs> the nasty old hard-boiled eggs. Hey, Bonnie, what happened? Years ago, when we all lived together, and my, my grandson had had this little tiny bed upstairs, and it was all the way to, I mean, I don't know how anything could get underneath it, but we smelled this smell for I don't know how long. And I finally told my son-in-law, I said, you've got to find that smell. And he wouldn't do it. So I investigated, picked up the mattress, and underneath the mattress was a dead baby possum. Oh, my, a possum? Yes, a baby possum, dead. And I don't know how, I don't know how it crawled underneath that because it was flat on, it was flat on the, I mean, it was practically all the way on the floor. And so when my son-in-law got home, I said, I told him what happened. And I said, you've got to get rid of that baby, dead baby possum. And we had to throw the mattress out too because it smelled so bad. It was awful. <laughs> Robin Liz, his morning crew. Do that investigation and find those smells where it comes from. It's his morning crew on his radio with Rob and Liz. I'm Brian for Rob. Something happened. When you came in yesterday morning, you were kind of flustered. I'm a little frazzled. Freaking out. Yeah, it wasn't even a smell. It was a sound. Mm. And I leave before everyone else. I park in the garage. And as I was loading up my car with my laptop and my bag and my pocketbook and all my stuff, um, I heard this sound. And it was like, yeah. It wasn't quite like it was more of a... So oh. I, I finally said, there is something in this garage. And I freaked out so much. I was not going to walk around the car from the passenger to the driver's side. What did you do? I crawled no. through the passenger side. I got stuck at one point and I had to sort of shimmy around. But I did. I, like, I was like, there's something alive in here. And I texted my husband. In, in your car, you crawled? I crawled across, yes. I crawled from the passenger side to the driver's side and then had to shimmy around. But I I texted him and said, there's something alive in the garage, please, at some point. So he went right out there and found that a mouse was trying to get in our dog food that we keep in the garage. But on his way up Mount Everest of this dog food, he failed and he fell into a bucket. And so this was this little mouse trying to knock his way out of the bucket. Trying to get out of the bucket. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, in investigations, David texted and said, I asked my son to bring in groceries one hot and muggy afternoon. He didn't. Uh, The next day, the car smelled horrible. He had left a gallon of milk in the car. And so the car smelled like that. That, for ooh, days that, on end. That oh, that milk's ooh. Ooh, curdled milk. Mark texted and said, "Had this horrible smell in my car. Could not figure out what it was." He and his wife were dating at the time. She evidently had gone to get groceries or whatever, and uh, there was an egg yolk under the seat, mm. under the passenger seat. Mm. J- just an egg yolk, mm. like a container that had an egg yolk. Mm. What was she eating with just an egg yolk? I, I don't know, but I guess the yolk was a mark. <laughs> Robin Liz, his morning crew. So Elvis Presley's boyhood home, they were going to demolish it, but somebody said, hey, maybe we should auction it off. So they've taken it down. They've uh, they've put it in a trailer. Mm -hmm. And uh, August 14th, that is the day that uh, Elvis fans can, you know, bid on it. And they're saying thirty to fifty thousand. I think I think that's so low ball. I I think that thing is going to go. It wouldn't surprise me if it went for like a quarter million. Right. I I just to say you're going to tear down Elvis's home. It's just weird to me that somebody yeah. didn't take it, flip it, make it into a museum, make it into a, you know, really try to recreate the way it would have looked yeah. as yeah. he was growing up. Well, the cool thing about it is if you bid and win the bid, you get the trailer, you pull it wherever you want to do, and then you can there you go. put the house up wherever you want. So. Robin Liz, his morning crew. Well, Tigger is mischievous, and he's uh, fearless. That's according to uh, his owners, a couple of brothers. I think it's in Canada. Mm -hmm. It's Gavin and and, uh, Cameron. So they were packing for a trip. They were were going on on a trip, and uh, they have this bear that kind of roams through their neighborhood, a black bear. Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, it's Canada. I mean, I guess. 
us, but just part, through the neighborhood. There's parts of the, the Carolinas and Georgia bear just yeah, my backyard the, uh, sometimes. Yeah, neighborhood. So. Anyway, the bear comes, and he's, he's getting close to the car, so uh, they try to get Tigger away, and Tigger's like, uh-uh, not having any of this, because Tigger will run away dogs and stuff. He's like an oh, wow. attack cat, I oh, guess. Oh, my goodness. So he arches up with his back, like and they he's, and, they're, and, and like one of them's trying to get Tigger away, and then he starts you know, filming on his cell phone. Like, well, why, of do we, why do we always do that? So Because and, it didn't happen unless <laughs> it's on social. Well, it's on TikTok. So anyway, <laughs> and he starts going towards the bear, and the bear takes off well i mean when a cat starts arching and starts making that that that's an hors d'oeuvre for the bear come on i mean <laughs> uh-uh, not tigger not tigger he's gonna close this out with dessert and what they said was that bear used to come in the neighborhood he ain't nowhere to be seen now <laughs> robin liz his morning crew so, 4th of July, obviously, mm-hmm. is uh, happening. But, you know, we're going to have fireworks displays and sparklers and the whole thing. My kids always wanted to start early with the little smoke are you, balls. Okay, are you a fireworks family? Um, we used to be. Okay. My husband, I would say, used to make almost a fireworks shrine on top uh, <laughs> in, in the living room of our, like, we used to have this, right, this entertainment center, and he would put all the fireworks up there, and then we got away from that because they're expensive, and, you know, whatever but Mm -hmm. but when the bait when the boys were little and they always wanted to do the sparklers right well these little chubby toddler fingers you know or little even preschool or elementary school could be dangerous they can be in it you know it pops back on their little hands ah, you know and we don't want that obviously there's a hack what can you do you take the sparkler and i'm not saying to allow your children to to you know play with (laughs) <laughs> fireworks or anything like this but if you give them a sparkler put it down in a carrot not a baby carrot that's not helping anybody but a big carrot <laughs> okay oh <laughs> like okay big, right so you just shove the little sparkler down into the carrot and their little chubby toddler fingers can wrap the hand just like with a big crayon if you see crayons for toddlers they're chunky Yes. You know, because they're easier to hold. And so it also takes the sparkler away from the hand a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so it can help. So Chunky. Well, uh, they do. They have their little chubby toddler fingers. Uh, that describes me. <laughs> <laughs> well, here. Here's a carrot. Hold your sparkler. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Well, are you okay over so, there? Are you, I mean, you've been like crying all through. Uh, I'm like, man, this must be an emotional touching song from for. No. King and country. And it was. Don't yeah, get me yeah, wrong. That's yeah. not what I mean by no. But no, my mascara may be running just because you ever open up Facebook and there's a time hop there. There's memories that of things that you have posted and they mm-hmm. catch you off guard. Like you've completely forgotten about them. Oh, okay. And so almost 10 years ago, a memory has popped up. <laughs> and it is my one of my son's told my daughter a, a way that she should shave her legs. Your son is giving your daughter shaving advice. Yes. He has. And at the time, he How was like he? nine years old. Okay. At the time, he was like nine years old. So I guess he heard us talking about shaving our legs or, you know, whatever. And he said, sissy, because that's what he called sissy. Here's what you should do. You should shave your leg everywhere but the knees. But the knees? But the knees. And then. When you're wearing a skirt or shorts, <laughs> when you sit down, people get a little surprise. A little, bloop, just a little, hey. <laughs> I was like. Fuzzy knees. <laughs> Fuzzy knees. Well, but he saw it as a good thing. <laughs> I'm like, how does your mind work? <laughs> like, Who raised you? Oh, wait, you did. <laughs> I know, right? I'm you're as warped as I am, kid. Uh, oh, my but I gosh. Mean, who thinks about something like that? You know, Brian, you should shave. Oh, yeah, you do have that goatee. So you sort of did that goatee. look. You're going to shave your face all but right there. But your knees, can you imagine if that were a trend? Because the jeans with the holes in the knees. <laughs> you're just walking around with hairy knees. You're just walking around. Are you kidding me right now, kid? Oh, my gosh. Oh. I'm thinking landscaping. It's like, you know. It's- <laughs> Rob and Liz, his morning crew.
Uh, earlier this morning, we talked with uh, producer, video producer Jake about uh, the grilled chicken that he left in his cabinet instead of making it to the freezer, then the smell. And, he, and it reminded me, uh, I was working at a place one time, and before I got there, there was a guy who was let go, mm-hmm. did not go well. He decided to leave a parting gift, and so he opened up a can of sardines, opened up a vent, and put it in the, <gasps> the drop ceiling and so then for weeks and nobody months, knew what yeah, it was they just knew there was a smell i mean because when sardines are fresh that's a glorious smell mm, yes, um <laughs> lovely <laughs> not at all and then if they've been sitting there for a while um that's pretty disgusting yeah right oh my goodness all right 800-447-7234 um linda text and said I couldn't figure out what a smell was in my office. So nine days ago, she went to Wegmans with her sister. She tried a piece of ham. Her sister didn't like it. I told her, don't toss it. I'll take it home to the dog. But then I forgot about it. Mm. And in her pocketbook, Mm. in her handbag, was a nine-day-old piece of ham. Porketbook. Porketbook. (laughs) <laughs> oh my goodness but i don't know that anything tops this okay now this was from an open mic and you can uh, use the my his radio app and leave us a message there on the open mic okay what happened my wife was doing a roast beef and the smell was awful we couldn't figure out what was wrong threw out the roast beef opened up the stove and a mouse had put dog food in between the uh, stove and we were actually cooking dog food uh while we we're trying to cook the roast beef Oh, oh, my goodness. But then, <laughs> to top it all, we have a text to 800-447-7234. Deborah said I had a friend, had a little boy. Mm. He was a year and a half old, and they started realizing when they got close to him, he smelled really, really bad. Then they figured out it was his breath when he would breathe through his nose like you could, oh, okay. you could smell. They took him to the doctor. He had taken a piece of an old sponge oh, no. that he had found and stuffed it up his nose. And that's what they were smelling. It was that just sp- rank mildew, just sponge. Yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They do call him SpongeBob now, but you know. <laughs>